everybody, welcome back. It is literally the first nice day that we have had in Michigan. And it's probably still only about 50 degrees out, maybe not even that, probably 45. But uh, the sun is shining, I got the doors to the shop open. And uh, for the first time in a while, I'm actually motivated to work on this thing. Um, never, never underestimate the value of a nicely heated, comfortable place to work in the winter because uh, it makes a big difference. If, if nothing else, it just makes a difference in how motivated you are to get out here and work on your stuff. So that's what I'm doing today, putting the finishing touches on things while we uh, get ready to go practice. So probably about a 50% chance that we can go practice this weekend at Crystal. Um, I'd like to say it's looking good, but it's really only looking good from Sunday to next Wednesday. And uh, Saturday and Sunday is the practice. It's looking like starting tomorrow, it's gonna be rainy and cold again. And uh, that's because spring will never get here in Michigan. And uh, yeah, that makes me nervous because if it makes things too wet, the track conditions and the pits, probably more than the track, won't be uh, capable of letting us practice there. So that could be kind of a bummer. But I'll show you guys what I'm up to. Um, we just got done putting the radiator hoses on, filling the cooling system. Um, if you don't have one of these funnels, they're worth every penny, man. I'll tell you what. Um, it's got this cool little stopper thing. I, I've just kind of been letting this sit here um, with you know the pressure of the water level being up. But it's got this stopper thing you put in there. You can pull that on this little radiator cap adapter. And go dump it so you're not playing the game of pulling it out and sticking your finger in there and keeping it from leaking all over the place uh, it's a nice touch but a uh, quick glance at this thing we're not really seeing any leaks or anything there's a couple drips you might see but that's really more from me spilling <laughs> hitting the funnel and uh let me get camera angle down here a little bit and uh the bleeder on the radiator so with the capless radiator uh, you got a little bleeder. Sometimes it's just an AN fitting cap there that you can run. You can run it back to here. I've seen people do that. Um, that's fine too, but whatever. Um, the fan, it's in there tight. I messed with it a little bit. We've got about three eighths of an inch of clearance to the, uh, to the radiator, which is maybe a little light. I just saw a drip. Dang, right there. That's a hose clamp though. That's not a huge deal. All right, snug that clamp up here in a second. But uh, yeah, so it's got about three eighths of an inch to the radiator. It's got about a quarter of an inch to the um, crank mandrel. It's gonna be hard to see down in there, but uh, I made a little customization to the uh, fan blades and it clears that, uh, that crank mandrel now. So is this what's leaking? No, I think it's that. Yeah, I can feel it right there. All right, cool, at least it's just a hose. A little bit of improv video here for you. Let's see. Oh, it feels tight. Oh, maybe not. It does. Maybe that clamp's just not so great anymore. I'd like to double clamp some of those anyhow. But, all right, anyhow. Uh, so really all that's left is uh, putting the headers on. Got a brand new set of uh, headers from uh, Schoenfeld, or I think the correct way to pronounce that is Shanefeld. Um, but I'm not totally sure. Anyway, uh, there's still old gasket on here. I'm gonna scrape that stuff off and uh, we're just gonna use some high temp RTV since the headers still have that kind of cheapo shipping paint on them that will burn off almost immediately. So I wanna take them back off um, right away and, and paint them with some high temp paint anyhow. So that's still gotta be done. Um, going to we still have to put power steering fluid in it and we still have to change the gear it's still got bristol gear in it but other than that um we're really just ready to go um those few things i'll get done here today and uh mess around with some tires maybe later this week we'll be good to go so that's all shaping up pretty good here let's uh let's mess with these headers
headers. Like I said, they still got that shiny black paint on them, which if you've ever bought a set of these, you know that burns off right away. I think they even say right in the thing that that's just more or less for shipping. <laughs> so uh, we'll just burn that off at practice and uh, go with that. So there's the old gaskets. Um, they came off okay. Uh, I did as much as I could with a plastic putty knife. I'll show you guys that. Um, I think that's the right way to do that, just to avoid marring up the, the surface very much. So just a cheapo Walmart plastic putty knife. Uh, I use these to scrape mud and stuff sometimes too. But anyhow, I uh, did that. And then I came back with a... Uh, uh, just a couple stubborn spots. I used a razor blade and then used a uh, Milwaukee battery operated uh, right angle grinder with a little soft scotch braid on there just to just to knock off the uh, remaining residue. And then I put some red RTV in there. It's actually sagging while we're at there. That's kind of a bummer. But uh, Anyway, that should be good enough to hold that up. I'll let that sit for just a couple minutes longer to get a little tackier. And then uh, we'll bolt up these exhausts and uh, put the headers, or sorry, the mufflers on them. So there's the right side. Here's what our muffler looks like. So uh, we have to run these for IMCA. You can see it's got a IMCA stamping right there. Um, I shouldn't say you have to run them. The tracks say you have to run mufflers. If you have to run mufflers, you have to run the IMCA mufflers. So that's the, the way the rules are written. And uh, yeah, I mean, you guys are into probably bashing all the IMCA stamp stuff. So whatever, I'm not going to defend it or bash it. It's just not my place. Um, but those are what we got to run. So that's it. Um, we welded on a couple pieces of pipe just for some quarter inch bolts to go through. All right, so there's a couple pieces of pipe on there as well. That'll slip over the end, and then you put a bolt across there. And uh, that also doubles as a way to support the ends of these. So got clamps on the frame, put a bolt in. I was running just the ones you get from the parts store where it's just a piece of rubber. Um, I don't know, I might stick with that, I might not. So. We'll see what happens. I don't know if anybody's got a strong opinion on that. I've run springs before. I've run the, the ones that are rubber from the parts store and I've run the ones that are really fancy that it's like a strip of rubber and it's got a little stamped metal thing riveted to it. And you can kind of clamp that to the pipe. Um, I don't know, I thought that was actually kind of elegant and lightweight. So I might go back to that, but probably the springs are the lightest if you can hook them into the bolts. So I'll see how the bolts lay out. And if that makes sense, we'll do that. But Whatever, it's just good to support the end of this so it's not bouncing and cracking the exhaust manifold. So I keep telling myself that I should put a couple of studs in each head just at the ends to kind of hang the, the header on while you get it lined up and get the bolts in it. And I never do. It's on a long list of great ideas I have that I never follow through on because I usually I'm in a hurry to do this kind of stuff when I have to do it. So that's how it goes. I think this body brace is going to be occupying the same space that the header wants to occupy, so that's going to have to move. Here is the body brace that I'm talking about. And you can see it's touching the header exactly. <laughs> so we'll take that body brace off for now and uh, figure something different out for that. It's kind of more on there for Bristol than anything else anyhow, just so that the wind doesn't catch this and shake it to death. But all right, let me take that off. All right, so back to hooking up our headers. Uh, 
these will all line up quite a bit better now that that's moved oh yeah oh yeah goes right in all right <clears throat> there's always these two in the front and back runners here that are a real pain with this old school exhaust manifold bolt pattern makes me wonder why we still use this exhaust pattern so much better to use the spread port pattern even if you, you know, don't have huge header runners it's still so much easier to get the the bolts in or it's, you can, I think you can use studs on every single location it's just it's just better it's kind of a bummer gently run it in Ooh, don't like that. Let's see what's going on with that one. That felt like it started good, but... I try to use the electrics as much as possible just to speed things up, but... You got to be careful. Hmm. Take a close look at this bolt. Yeah, maybe we'll change that bolt out just to see. Need a shorter extension anyhow. Grab a bolt from the other side just to try it. unhappy. Let's back these other ones off and try it again. Stuff like this, you're better off just going a little slow. <clears throat> Especially into an aluminum head like this on an engine that you can't take apart and fix. <laughs> There we go. That feels way better. I'm still gonna grab a ratchet and do it by hand. There we go. All right, last on. <laughs> yeah, can't quite get that on there. We'll run that one with the ratchet. You know, so how's things going you guys' as parts of the world is, uh, I think a lot of people down south are already racing, right? So I always get jealous of you guys down there this time of year because it'll still be a few weeks before we see actual racing, I think. Typical Michigan uh, false spring events, but uh, it's just life up here, I guess. Oh, just heard a bubble in our, <laughs> our funnel. That's why I leave it up there like that for a while. You jerk the car around a little bit and it'll it'll uh, break loose some, some air pockets every now and then. I'm gonna back these off one more time and get a better run on this one last bolt. Just cause it feels a little hanky. Like I said, I'd rather go slow. Oh yeah, that freed it right up. So it was just this one is kind of sneaky. You gotta fish it up through here, I think. Hey, shoo! Woo! There's a good one. That's the other thing with Michigan this time of year. You start getting uh, the mold and. Hey, shoo! All sorts of stuff that makes me sneeze. Funny story about that too. I don't know if it's just part of getting older or what, but I never had seasonal allergies until I lived in Japan one winter and fall. Well, winter to spring, basically. Now I have seasonal allergies. 
Could be coincidence, like I said, maybe just because I was getting older in that time frame, but definite uh, correlation to my sneeziness and uh, seasonal feeling, <laughs> for lack of a better term, <laughs> after I spent time living in Japan. So, <sighs> is what it is. Wouldn't change them experiences for nothing, don't get me wrong, but. <clears throat> there was a definite correlation to uh, getting the winter or the spring sneezies. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I'm kind of struggling to get this. That one. There we go. There we go. Hold this up. Yeah. Yeah. About a quarter inch drive would be better here. It'd just be a smaller size socket. Ooh, that one's tough. That one's probably gonna be a wrench. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's, yeah, she's pretty snug. Let me grab a wrench. Let me step on this muffler, then grab a wrench. Yeah, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. That bolt right there, that thing, like, yeah, that ain't gonna fit. So we're gonna have to sit here with our little open end wrench and we're not gonna be able to grab the first thread. So let's start over. Remember how I said we were gonna go slow? This is what going slow on game tails. Oh, I could have sworn I felt that that was in there good. That's kind of a bummer. And the hole looks lined up really good. And that, actually that hole in the Plan just slotted for that reason, so that's nice. Let's get this started. Grab it kind of straight. Get the thread on. Hmm, still not liking that. I hate using these little open end wrenches. This is such a bummer. Let's take this bolt out and take a closer look at it. Make sure it doesn't have a goofed up thread. Yeah, I mean, it's got that shiny thread right there that I don't like. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. Put my hand behind it there. So, let me get a fresh one. Dang. I really need another hand here to hold the header up. Dang it. Yep. Let me get a ratchet strap on that. Oh, hey, there's Barbara. Barbara! I need help. Perfect hey, timing, huh? yeah, it is perfect timing. That's what I was just saying. So uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get the last bolt in the header over here. I don't have enough hands. Okay. Can you hold up the the end of the header here and help me get this? Which side? This one? Yep. Just gonna hold, no, go way back there. Okay. Just hold that, just ever so slightly take the pressure off of it. You'll feel it lift up. See that? Oh, there you go. Okay. I gotta get this bolt started. There we go. Now we're cooking. Don't let it go. Sorry. What are you doing? Yeah, I took the uh, took and cleaned off the old gasket material and buffed it all up with a grinder and Scotch Brite. Oh, worst job. I know, right? But the, <laughs> but I, what I didn't do is clean these holes out. Now I'm oh. feeling the effects of that. Right? I probably should have done that. 
You cheaped out. Not the same. Well, I didn't really think about it, to be honest. Mm. That's the bad part about doing that with the Scotch Brite is you kind of make a bunch of stuff that can go in the into the uh, bolt hole. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Be cool. Be cool. Falling out. Be cool. Remember how easy it used to be to put headers on a sprint car? Oh my gosh. Because it had studs and they were all straight and yep. had lots of room. I could do it by myself. I could hold the, I know, right? hold the end of it up with my toe <laughs> and <laughs> oh. put, the, put the nuts on. So much better. I left you the gear change. I didn't know if you wanted to do that one. Yay. Since I know that's your favorite thing to do. Does it need a hook to this? No, it's it's the bleeder. Oh, it's just the water bleeder. comes out of there when you open it up. Oh, okay. Right, so we got water still sitting in this funnel, filling that. It should be all filled up. Okay. But yeah, they probably are wondering why we use the Home Depot bucket for coolant, or at least the preen bucket. Why? <laughs> well, the reason is you know the reason. Because we have dogs, and you can put a nice tight lid on that, and you don't get any Daisy Snoots in there. That, that would make me sick if Daisy got sick from getting in the coolant, and that could have been avoided. So, yup, there we are. But yeah, we put these mufflers on, and. Uh, rig up some sort of supports for them that ain't super critical i mean we could go test with it just like it is but i'm in pretty good shape we had one coolant leak right here that hose clamp was a little bit loose might be time to put some new silicon elbows on that upper pipe it's got probably five seasons on it now that might be pushing it mm. i think them things last longer than rubber hoses but it's still you don't want it to fail yeah yeah, it's a big problem if that comes off. <clears throat> but, yup. The fan, I was telling them, the fan is, uh, it's about as perfect as I can get it. It's about three-eighths of an inch away from the radiator, its closest point. Not everywhere, just at the very bottom. Because the engine's tilted back. Oh, okay. And then it clears the the crank bolt there by about quarter inch but the flex should pull it towards the radiator so i think it all is gonna end up pretty close but we'll keep an eye on it we can, i don't think we'll be able to run unless you go to either a thinner radiator core or a different fan i think those are your only options because there's really no more that i can do it starts getting close to the power steering pump and everything the way it is right now so okay show them what we're talking about i kind of showed this earlier but it is, it is kind of tight, but yeah, at the very bottom, that, that fan blade tip right there, I guess I could sand off the tips of these blades, even though you're really not supposed to do that. You get too much hacking on there and they end up not being balanced, which I took them and I bolted them together to try to keep them as true as possible and then weighed them all on a <laughs> male, male scale and stuff to make sure they're all about the same weight still. So but you start going in a bunch of different places, it makes me more nervous, right? But everything else I think is good. Um, I, uh, I hung the, the Weir's banner behind you there. The Ultra Force machines. Oh, right. That's oh sorry. I've seen that before. That yeah, came with the yeah, we just got it. Yeah, so we upgraded our Spring cool. Smasher to a automatic Ultra Force. And uh, I spent a lot of time with pull bars uh, working on that. And that, I feel like I learned a lot. So there's, a, there's some advantages to the automatic machine there that I, I think are really hard to capture um, if you're not doing a lot of them. But if you're just doing springs, I think you're probably fine with a manual machine. And we were taking the manual machine, and this might be a tip that helps somebody too. We would take and actually video the scale and the the uh, load cell at the same time 
so that we could stop the video every time those two moved and, and put points in a Excel spreadsheet and graph it. So we didn't have the graphing capability in the machine like the automatic does, but we kind of made our own. Um, that works, but you got to be careful because they don't update at the same time. So it gets a little, it can get a little weird and you get some points that don't necessarily make sense. And you might not catch everything on the, the screen when it updates. So it's nice to just be able to store it all in the machine and be able to compare one to the other, which is what we did. So we took our pull bar that we liked from last year and we tried to tune a couple other ones to match that and we'll, we'll test them all and see what we think. But my good old Weir's biscuit pull bar is still the answer, I think. So we'll stick with that. I talked to Chad about it at Boone last year. What, what pull bar should I be running? He's like, people are winning on everything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's kind of what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Make it work. So, there's no, yep. There's no magic there's bullet. No, there's no magic. Spend more money. That's that's the only magic. Yeah. And you'll probably not be any faster. Just like any other problem, you can't just throw money at it. You got to work. So. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're probably ready to wrap this one up. We got quite a bit done. Oh, pull bar is one more thing we got to do. We got to change that out because it's got the long Bristol bar in it. Oh. That only takes a few minutes, though. Okay. We'll do that in the next video. But that one's set up the way you That's want That's all it. set up. We just got to set the pinion angle after we get that in there. I think it's still the right length and everything. Um, it's set to the length that was written on it. So I think we're, we're okay because I did take it apart. I rebuilt it, put fresh bushings in it, and smashed it on the machine. So it's all clean. all new and clean there. But, yep, I think we'll do that in another video. I want to do a comparison of uh, swedge tubes or chassis suspension tubes, whatever you want to call them. They're not all the same. The most expensive ones aren't always the best. Surprise, surprise. But, uh, yeah, I'll do that. I think that'll be our next episode. I'll do that. I'll change that pull bar out. We'll set the pinion angle. We'll change the gear. And I gotta adjust the shifter linkage, that's the other thing. So while you're changing gear, I'll adjust the shifter linkage. We rebuilt that transmission after Bristol last year. Apparently you can't drive these things around on pavement for miles at a time and up hills and traffic jams and stuff like that without burning the clutch out of them. I never thought about that. because it, it probably had a hundred nights on it, so it really wasn't that yeah. bad, but still, yeah, you're driving this thing around it was a long way up to the track. Yeah, the staging lanes at Bristol were pretty crazy. If you go back and watch some of those videos from last year, and then you're going like up a hill, and then getting out of the, the infield was bad too, right? So there was a whole bunch of traffic jams and issues there. So anyhow, so rebuilt the transmission. I think I got to just adjust the shifter rod for that. I, when I drove it the other day, I had to hold it like between low and reverse to get it to stay in low. So just need to, what would that be if I'm pulling? I need to shorten the rod to make that work. So everything else is pretty much ready to go. All right, we've been rambling here for a little bit. Thanks for hanging out with us. We already told you what you're going to see in the next episode. What else we got to tell them? Thanks for watching. Oh. <laughs> Hit subscribe. Give us a like. Comment below. Share the videos with your friends. That's a lot of instructions. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We're good at telling people what to do. We're just horsing around. You Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks. We'll see you next time.